Hello, everyone hates YouTube introduction, so let's speedrun it. This is my main account where I've beaten the Inferno, got on the max gate, beaten every single quest in the game, unlocked all of the music tracks and finished the achievement diary. I've also beaten the Champions Challenge, have a Bloodhound and a ton of other pets. If that wasn't enough, I met my fiance playing this game 10 years ago and have been running a clan since around 2009. But who cares about that anymore because I created a brand new account with almost no restrictions where the plan is to beat everything in old school RuneScape. To give you an idea of what that means, it's filling the collection log, getting the Zuck Helm, Max Cape, Quest Cape, Achievement Diary Cape, Champions Cape, Music Cape, All Pets, buying all of the bank slots, getting a dragon trophy from leagues, speed running every quest in the game for the new speed running rewards, having best in slot everything and a bunch of other goals. I'll leave the current goals list in the description and if you have something that would be good to add to the list, leave a comment. Now very quickly, I just want to say how grateful I am at the response I got on the last video. I went from a humble 50 subscribers and skyrocketed to over 4,000 as of the time I'm editing this. I'll talk about this more later though so that we can just start off with the video. Okay, so in the previous episode we created the account, prepped for winter tot and then camped there until 99 fire making. I managed to snag a bunch of collection log slots from winter tot and it was some nice starter cash. I then started prepping for my active goal and my afk goal. The active goal was questing so to prepare for that I did some prayer training for overheads and unlocked 55 mage for high elk. That way I could high elk what's questing for passive magic xp. I also got 70 agility and was alkin whilst doing that too. I then went into a trance-like state. I put on some background music, loaded up the quest helper plugin and blitzed through a ton of quests, ending up on around 250 quest points total. When I was starting to get burnt out from questing, I decided to choose woodcutting as my AFK go-to. We finished on 97 woodcutting and so we'll be continuing where we left off in this video. Alright, here we are going into episode 2. Let's start off with some farming levels. This is something I forgot to show off last time. I'll show a level for farming and hunter every now and then, but just know that I am doing them in the background. So the active goal at the moment is still the Barrow's Gloves and Questscape. Despite having around 250 quest points, we still haven't finished Recipe for Disaster. The AFK goal is still 99 wood cutting as well. We will be getting all of this done and more during the video. As I mentioned earlier, I started a clan back in 2009 and it's still going to this day. Now this is relevant to the progress because every now and then I'm going to have to put the active goal on pause. This is so that I can focus on clan events like a skilling week or a PVM bingo. I'm not going to abandon what I've done for over 10 years now just because my YouTube has blown up. Not to worry though because we will always be progressing even if we do take a quick detour. So here's the first detour, an agility skilling week. Agility is one of the most hated skills for most people in this game, so to provide a little motivation we did an XP competition. I decided personally that I'd go to Brimhaven to knock out one of the first graceful recolors and grab the pirate's hook which is a collection log slot. In total this means 1050 tickets. You can get roughly one ticket per minute max so that means that this grind is going to take 17 and a half hours minimum. Now I could wait to complete this grind after finishing off some of the higher tiers of the Karamja Diary which give a chance at double tickets but my thought process was the pirate suck is 4 mil and essentially I need the money now in the early and mid game not when I've completed the Elite Diary. However, that thought process didn't for some reason factor in that I wanted to complete the Karamja Medium Diary at least. This meant buying a Gout Tuba because I unfortunately wasn't lucky enough to find one whilst doing the Tybo one I favour. Anyway, whilst doing the agility, a few clan members stopped by to join me and I decided to be evil and host a drop party here. You may be thinking, why would a drop party be evil? Well, just imagine seeing a drop on the floor but you're getting absolutely destroyed by the arena's obstacles and someone else grabs the drop. Let me through if I hadn't failed this obstacle <laughs> six times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Literally six times in a row. Oh, unlucky. It reduces your agility level, by the way. Does it? Yeah, yeah that's, that's why, it that's why you should have brought some pies. <laughs> Here we are, unlocking our first graceful recolor then. Honestly, I think this is probably my favorite, and I'll likely be wearing this one a lot until maybe we get the Sepulchre recolor. There's not really much else to say about the Brimhaven agility course. It's fun for a while, but it gets old quick. After unlocking the recolor, it was another 800 tickets for the Pirate's Hook. So 13 hours later I had grabbed all of the tickets and claimed it. I then sold it on the GE for 3.6 mil. We still had a little bit of time left on the agility event so I decided to do some rooftop courses. Ideally you wouldn't be doing the Polniv niche course because you'd be doing the Sears Diary which boosts the XP rate there, but I didn't want to get sidetracked on my sidetrack goal. After the Polniv niche course I started boosting for the Relica course and it's here where something quite amazing happened. 
Oh my god, I saw <laughs> I saw the collection log and I <laughs> Uh, I saw the collection log and then I was like, what the hell is that for? Oh my god, the agility pet. Oh, that's such a good one. I really didn't want to go dry. I didn't get I didn't get that on the main account with 99 agility. No, I hate agility, so that's really good. Oh my god, that's so cool. Yep, that's right, our very first pet drop on the account. I continued with agility until around level 80, and that's where I decided to stop. Here's some quick farming levels as promised. So the agility grind did burn me out a little bit and so I decided to take a break and AFK at the Redwoods. It wasn't too long until we hit 99 woodcutting. Yay! Yeah, it's 99 Ooh. woodcutting! Finally. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'll go do something else now. So we completed the AFK goal for now and it's time to move back onto the active goal. There was only a couple of quests left to complete until I had the Barrow's Gloves. The first being Monkey Madness which also unlocks us the Dragon Scimitar and some nice combat XP. This also unlocks the last subquest for Recipe for Disaster so I completed that too. At this point all of the subquests are complete and the only quest I have left to finish RFD is Desert Treasure. I think Desert Treasure is one of the requirements because the RFD bosses are essentially a clone of the Desert Treasure bosses. So I defeated all of them for both quests and finally have the Barrow's Gloves. So we don't have many quests left until the quest cape. We will be finishing that off in this video but I wanted to upgrade my gear and clean my bank first. I sold off some of the Redwood Locks and some of the Marks of Grace for some quick cash. Now whilst I show a time lapse of me cleaning my bank I want to talk about something that kept coming up in the comments of the last video. Lots of people kept mentioning how much progress I made in a single video and that I'd be maxed really quickly. Some even saying it's a max cape speedrun. I even had one of the best people going for a max cape speedrun leave a comment saying he would race me to completionist. Now I just want to tamper our expectations and let you know that I'm really not the most efficient RuneScape player. I do play more efficiently than most people but I'm nowhere near the level of JCW and Habar so I wouldn't expect a max cape speedrun anytime soon. That being said, I will however aim to get at least one big achievement per episode and so chances are if you're this far into the video you're interested in the future progress of the account. So if you want to help a small creator like myself then subscribe and leave a like on the video. It means a lot. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about the upgrades I want before the quest cape. One of the best melee upgrades you can get for yourself is the fighter torso. Now, I know a lot of people struggle with barbarian assault and hate it, but when you're in a voice call with some people, even if they're new to the minigame, it makes it so much more fun. Um, Egg, are you going to sleep? Or are you so No, good? no, no, it's, uh, it's almost 12, not too much. And I have all, uh, only drink nine beers. Nine beers. <laughs> Bruh. I don't know how you're playing Barbarian or something. You're, <laughs> like you're, do you're doing God's work, dude. Mad Egg. Wait. Yeah. Come heal <laughs> Did he people. Fall asleep? Mad Egg, heal I'm, people. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ten beers done. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> ten more. <laughs> what is that? Oh, oh my good <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can take my, I can take my main. It's fine. <laughs> you know, you can buy rune, right? You can buy yes, rune plate yes, legs. I, and I stuff. know, <laughs> I, I know, I know, but it's expensive. Heal me, please. <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning of this BA grind I was leveling up the rolls because I will have to get level 5 eventually for all rolls at some point, though I did save my points up for a torso as well. I'll be finishing off the level 5 rolls and grabbing more of the collection log slots along with the pet in a future episode. Next on my list of upgrades was a bunch of items I could get from the GE. I decided to invest in an amulet of fury as it's a great all rounder. I also bought some dragon boots, a dragon skimmy, a whip, a berserker ring and a full obsidian set with a berserker necklace for training. The obsidian an armor set gives a 10% boost in melee accuracy and melee strength. Pair this up with a berserker necklace which increases the amount of damage when holding an obsidian weapon by 20% 
and it becomes a very nice set to train melee with early on. So I then trained up a little bit with melee, but then quickly decided that I want to get even more upgrades. So I started to level up ranged instead. I was pretty broke after spending money on those upgrades I mentioned, so I decided to AFK sand crabs with darts. After I got 75 ranged, I decided I was going to take on the fight caves. Being super broke, I had to go with a classic setup, which was the Carol's crossbow. I hadn't used this thing in years, and honestly, it absolutely slaps. Also, because I unlocked Ancients, I brought an Ancient Staff and some Blood Blitz runes just in case. Honestly though, I didn't even need it because I had a bunch of supplies at the end. Getting the first Fire Cape on an account always feels a little bit special. One day in the future, I'm going to be speedrunning this with a Tebow. The next upgrade was a Dragon Defender. I didn't quite have the stats to get one yet, so as a short term replacement, I bought the Buck of War pages. This gives a plus two strength bonus. Every little helps. More farming levels as promised. So for the Dragon Defender, I needed a total of 130 in my attack and strength skill. I like to just go for 65, 65. So I killed a bunch of Ammonite crabs and then just made my way to the Warriors Guild. Usually when I go for the Dragon Defender, I'll reanimate a set of Mithril armor. Honestly, I don't know if this is the best method, but it works well enough for me. Here you can see me getting all of the Defender drops as well as a Long Bone and a Dragon Spear drop. Usually those wouldn't be worth mentioning, but it's the first time getting them on this account, so it makes the number go up in the collection log. So, now I have almost everything I need to start training my melee stats. I decided to train up in this spot of the Ammonite Krebs. It's somewhat hidden away from the main beach area and it's got a nearby bank of the volcanic mine area. Anyway, I trained up here until around base 75s. And here's some more farming levels as promised. So, now that I had base 75s, I thought it was about time that I train up within the Nightmare Zone. Because I completed tons of quests, I had access to a whole bunch of bosses, but in reality, you really only need to turn on like 5 or 6 when training up. Now, each time you go into the Nightmare Zone, it costs 26k. This doesn't sound like much, but if you mess up or go AFK for too long, it really does add up. Luckily though, every day you can buy some herb boxes from the rewards chest, and these end up paying for the entrance fees, and give a slight profit. For supplies, you essentially just use the potions that you can buy from the rewards chest. Eventually, I had earned enough extra points to imbue the Berserker Ring, which gives extra strength bonus. So, whilst I train up in the background, let's talk about future plans. As it stands, we completed our AFK goal of 99 working, and the current active goal is the Quest Cape. Currently, we're AFK in our melee stats to base 85s, but I do have the next AFK goal lined up. This is something not a lot of people have done in the game, which is obtain every single piece of Castle Wars armor all at once. Now, a few of you watching already know this, as collection loggers will buy the most expensive expensive item in Castle Wars shop and then sell it back. This gives back the same amount of tickets and also completes the item in the collection log. So if you want to just complete the collection log, you only need 800 tickets. Now I'm not going to be doing this, I'm going to unlock and own every single piece of Castle Wars rewards all at once. This means 5,549 tickets, which if I win every single game of Castle Wars, I'll be looking at 1,850 games. Each game takes two minutes to start in the lobby and then 20 minutes of playtime. So assuming a win every single time is going to take roughly 680 hours. There are ways to speed this process up, but as I said, this is going to be my AFK goal. So I don't want to put a ton of effort into this. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because the majority of the armor can be stored inside the playground house, which is going to be one of the big objectives later in the series. I want to fill every single container inside the playground house. So that means every graceful recolor of the Castle Wars armor, all of the clue scroll items, and a ton more. You might see me sell items that I could have stored in the POH, but don't worry, I will be rebuying them later on. Which leads me to my next point. What am I going to be doing after the quest cape? Well, I'm going to be money making as much as possible whilst clearing a bunch of collection logs along the way. I won't give any spoilers now, but just know I have a clear strategy and assuming I go on rate for most items, it's going to be a fun journey. So now that I have base 85 melee stats, it's time to hang up parts of the obsidian set and the necklace. I decided to keep the legs because they're still pretty solid until I unlock the bandos tassets. I then dumped all of my fossils that I collected from Ammonite Crabs into the Varrock Museum. Doing this gave quite a lot of XP limbs that I could then put into Slayer. After that I then went out to the Chaos Altar to grab some prayer levels. I want level 70 because of the Piety Prayer. Unfortunately this time we did see quite a lot of PKers mainly because I decided to do this at peak time on a weekend. 
not my smartest move, but I did still manage to get the prayer level that I needed. Now, I hadn't actually completed King's Ransom for Piety at this point, but I decided to take on some quests I was struggling with before training up the account. The first being a taste of hope. I put the XP rewards into Slayer again. A few people in the clan needed some help with a knight at the theatre, and I also needed to get it done for my quest cape, so I grabbed some quick gear and gave it a shot. I've not done a ton of theatre of blood in the past, but I can get past entry mode pretty easily. I'm looking forward to learning theatre of blood in the future though. Each raid in the game has kill count milestone capes, so for theatre of blood I'm going to need to do 2000 runs for the Sinhaza's Shroud 5. Of course, I'm also going to need the cosmetic kits and all of the purples too. Should be fun. So this was actually the last quest that a clan member had to do to get his quest cape, so that was pretty nice to see. Every so often I would do Tears of Guthix for that sweet runecrafting XP. I also finished the Halloween event, and because this is a new account I unlocked dozens of previous year's rewards. Now it's time to focus on the skilling side of the game. I need to raise my skills up to get the minimum requirements for big quests like Song of the Elves. I started out with mining on Fossil Island, but then quickly moved over to the mining guild. Here the iron rocks respawn faster, which essentially means more XP per hour. But I was also getting unidentified minerals, which are going to be used to buy the mining clubs that you can get from the guild. These are collection log slots and are actually pretty useful. I sold all of the iron that I mined and made around 2 mil, which was pretty nice. I'm fairly broke, so it's going to help out a lot. I then bought some bars and started smithing some dart tips. I did this so I could make a tiny bit of profit from that as well. With the money I made from mining and smithing, I started buying unfinished Ranar potions and snake grass so that I could make some prayer potions. Because my cash stack was quite small, I could only do a few at a time. I made sure to use the amulet of chemistry for this as it gives a chance to make a 4 dose potion instead of a 3 dose potion. This helps save a little bit of money. Now, here's a quick look at my bank at this point. I'm really quite broke and so I decided to knock out the slave requirement for Monkey Madness 2. I was hoping to make a little bit of money to fund some of the other skills. Here's 70 farming, which is needed for Song of the Elves. I also decided at this point I should probably start planting his spory, so I did a quick kill and got a collection log slot for the Ayasaur seed. For Slayer, I used the last bit of my cash stack to buy a black mask. I couldn't believe that these were 1 mil. I was half hoping that I would get a cave oritas myself so that I could get a black mask drop. Instead, Duradel told me I was on a cave slime task. I really can't remember why this was my task, but it's a quick one, so I went to finish it off. Strangely enough, I did get another collection log slot here, being the Mighty Iron Boots. Then, if by magic, the first task Duradel gave me was Cave Horrors. I was pretty excited at this point. I killed 40 or so Cave Horrors, and wouldn't you know, a nice black mask drop. This came in so clutch because I could now buy a cannon to help speed up the other tasks. Another task that I did was Greater Demons, and for killing my first one I unlocked a combat task which was pretty nice. I then got a Fire Giant task and got a 60 Slayer and my first Ancient Shard in the same kill. I then bought my cannon and a couple of thousand cannonballs. Back to Fire Giants and I got my first Stark and drop. Another task that I got was Worms. Never killed these on the main account because I got 99 Slayer before Konor came out. They're pretty cool and I got another combat task for killing one. Fire Giants seem to love me because I got my first champion scroll from them. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a few of these stacked up in the bank over time. The first Bloodfell kill was also a combat task. Not really sure why these are combat tasks honestly. Duradel then assigned me some more cave horrors and I was feeling pretty good about it. Walked in and got another black mass drop. Then Bloodfelds gave me another collection log slot of being the Black Boots. A few tasks later I had completed the 69 Slayer requirement for Monkey Madness. I then got a couple of Fletching levels done for Sins of the Father, and then a few Thieving levels done for Dragon Slayer 2. I made sure to drink from the Tears of Guthic so that I could get some more runecrafting XP. The next skill and grind was Hunter. Hunter is a pretty quick skill, I was slacking on the Birdhouse run so I could have trained this passively, but oh well. Red Salamanders are pretty quick, and then I moved on to Black Salamanders in the Wilderness for even quicker XP. Didn't see any PKs here, which makes sense because I mean why would you PK here? Hunting in the Wilderness means I could put down an extra trap and get more XP per hour. Now the next skill and grinds that I wanted to do was crafting and construction, though I was still too poor to get both done. I had to think about possible money makers and couldn't think of anything better than Bandos. I always seem to make good money there, so I bought a Zemi Dehyde top and a Guthan set. I finished off King's Ransom and the Night Waves to finally unlock Piety. It was then time to make some money at Bandos. Fun but not forgotten. Oh, I told the you. Ruby, the Ruby as Who well. brought the chisel? Who brought the chisel? <laughs> Come on, Amy. The, the Ruby, that's what. <laughs> Oh my-
my god! Oh 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 my god! I was wondering why it was all too bloody. I've got. I picked him up though. Hell yeah! That was a good time. Of course, them on the. Oh, I actually hit pretty big though. Holy shit! Nice one. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! We actually got. We actually got some tasses. Oh, uh, that's, 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 <laughs> Tilly grabbed it, yes! <laughs> Tilly grabbed it. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect. We were literally oh. just saying. If only that happened one kill earlier. That would have been amazing. Oh. Can I unironically have them for <laughs> to hold on my sheep account? Because oh, yeah. uh, it will be better DPS. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've got to get the jade skirt at the moment, so sweet. Hell yeah, the plans coming together. I then sold off the tacits and split the cash. Spent a bunch of money on molten glass and then got to the level required for green dragon hide bodies. Now, green dragon hide bodies are fairly cheap crafting XP, but still pretty good XP per hour. I managed to get level 70 fairly quickly from them. As soon as I hit 70 crafting, I didn't waste any time and instantly bought a ton of oak planks for the 70 construction requirement for Song of the Elves. The XP is super quick for construction, so I managed to knock this out within a couple of hours. After construction, I went straight into the abyss to get the essence pouches. I need 55 rune crafting for Fermanic Exiles. Honestly, don't really know why they added this as a requirement. You really only see runes involved in that quest when solving the puzzle on the door to unlock the final boss. Not exactly rune crafting. Anyway, I did a couple of levels at the ZMI altar, but I remember just how slow and how boring this is. So instead, I decided that I would finish every single medium diary in the game for the XP rewards that they give. I managed to knock them all out fairly quickly. If you didn't know, you can actually use the quest output plugin for this too. Anyway, I dumped all of the XP reward lamps into runecrafting and it just about got me the level required. So at this point I decided to take down a bunch of quests, Grim Tales, Swan Song, Finished a Night at the Theatre, Devious Minds, Dream Mentor, and Beneath Curse Sands which also unlocks TOA. Now everything you're about to see from this point on was done in a single day all back to back. I started out the day finishing off Fremenic Exiles and then My Arms Big Adventure. I then finished off Sins of the Father. I then put all of the XP rewards into Slayer again. I would have chosen Runecrafting, but unfortunately needed level 60. After that, I went straight onto Dragon Slayer 2. Vorkath was pretty easy and didn't give me any trouble at all. I then managed to beat Galvik first time in a pretty budget setup. Strangely enough, despite in him first time, I did actually die twice to the regular dragons, costing me 200k. Honestly, don't know how that happened, I think I just lost focus. Anyway, Dragon Slayer 2 completed. Of course, we pet the dog at the entrance and then I claim my XP rewards. I wasn't really sure which combat stat to put these into, so I just chose range. Again, I want to remind you that I did all of this in a single day. Here I am at Crook. Pretty easy fight considering you can flinch him on a corner. I'd feel bad for doing this if I didn't have to suffer the agility section of this awful quest. Towards the end, I killed a demonic gorilla and this also counted as an elite combat task. The last boss is a super simple fight. You can save spot the first couple of phases with a magic longbow. Again, I'd feel bad for doing this if I didn't have to suffer the entire stealth section on the platform. The final part of the fight is quite straightforward too. You just have to have auto retaliate on and walk back each time he drags you towards him. I dumped the XP rewards into ranged again after completing the quest. Now, the last quest of the day was to finish Song of the Elves. I sold off my whip to buy back an occult and some supplies. I did actually die once to Seren, again because I think my brain was fried at this point, but not to worry because I went straight back, grabbed the anglerfish I had in the gravestone and managed to successfully finish the fight. This means I now have completed every single quest in the game and can get my quest gate. Okay, so earlier I spoke about doing Castle Wars as my next AFK goal. There isn't really much to show in terms of gameplay here, but this is my current ticket stack. What you are looking at is roughly 220 hours of progress. I'm sure a few people might be upset that I'm boosting Castle Wars and I completely understand. In the future, I'm hoping to run some Castle Wars events and get a small chunk of the tickets done legitimately. So. Whilst I show you my current stats and bank, I'd like to again give a massive thank you for the response I got on the last 
video. The response was crazy and so I hope you enjoyed this video as much as the last one. My subscriber count is insane. I was only hoping for around like a hundred subscribers by the end of the year and we've gone straight past that. So I thought I'd use this opportunity to showcase some other smaller creators. I've put a playlist on my channel if you'd like to check it out. Anyway, I have to go back to playing the game so I can get episode 3 out for you. On screen should be that next episode, but if it's not ready yet, it'll be the playlist that I mentioned.